first victory in Melbourne, their first win at the famous MCG. It certainly won't be the last. The obvious question after the day is about their opponents, Melbourne, who managed just seven goals. And the Melbourne situation is well known. Their uh, list is uh, poor. It's got a lot of holes in it. It's going to take more than one year for it to be resurrected. Well, welcome to Access All Areas. There were three very impressive winners from the weekend who made a big statement against quality opposition. But Damien Barrett, as I introduce you, clearly, once again, there was one big loser. What is going to happen to the Melbourne Football Club? What will happen, Darcy, is there will be a, a structure in place where Mark Neal won't be coaching that team in 2014. And that decision may even be made at some stage of the remainder of 2013. It was a... A decision that was arrived at by some people prior to yesterday's game. But when that happens yesterday, on the back of Peter Jackson, who was a very, very sound and smart football administrator coming to the footy club, he's got the charter to change now. He's AFL endorsed, AFL supported. He needs to make change and, he, and he's going to. Damo, the constant calling for heads in an industry is something that I'm not overly comfortable with and I always think of the human element. There's people's livelihoods at stakes. But uh, in this case... When you look at what's happening in the Melbourne Football Club, the people I know who are supporters of Melbourne who contributed significant money to the fight back, who have supported them all their life, they're saying they've given up on football at the moment. Mm. There's 13,000 people at the MCG to watch that game on the weekend. It is just a devastating place to be at the moment. And sometimes you just have to make a change because there's yeah. nothing else you can do. Yeah, it's unsellable, this footy club, at the moment. And Peter Jackson has to sell it at some stage. He knows there's no respect. He says there's no respect from within the footy club itself, let alone from without. And... To not make the change would be the worst scenario, I think, now, Darcy. As, as you've explained it with those people you know who've pumped in money. Let's just take a look at Peter Jackson. Sunday footy show yesterday, Darcy. This was before the Gold Coast game. There's no commitment to Mark Neal even before this game. Peter Jackson yesterday. His contract ended 2014, and that's where it sits at the moment. I know I can't stop people speculating, but from my perspective, it's a question of, uh, you know, how the footy department is operating as a whole and, and how the players developing and whether they want to play for this footy club. You haven't guaranteed Mark Neal will be at this footy club at the start of next season? I haven't guaranteed anyone will be at this footy club um, for the duration because we've got to look at how this footy club is structured. Um, as soon as I mention the word changes, which I've done internally, um, you can't, can't guarantee anyone anything. Darcy knows the way football clubs operate that man. He's uh, made some very tough calls at Essendon in the past. He's yeah. already knowing he has to make some tough calls. And there's no limit to what he may do with that footy club. No, you get the feeling. His words change. There's going to be a lot uh, coming down the pike at... Uh pipe at uh, Melbourne with uh, this year or whether it's at the end of the season. Hey, not uh, such a, a big concern for the Fremantle Dockers at the moment, uh, Damo. They were fantastic uh, yeah. at home against the Magpies. When you consider who's out of their side, four of their best five players, Matthew Pavlich, Nath Fife, Stephen Hill, Aaron Sandilands, they're unquestionably, mm. maybe throw Luke McFarlane in as the, as the number five. Kepler Bradley and Jonathan Griffin, uh, who went down in the first quarter with a shocking injury. So to be able to perform as well as uh, they did is, uh, is an extraordinary performance. The concern, though, now, uh, with Griffin going down, Sandilands out, is uh, where their uh, ruckman yeah. comes from next. Zach Dawson had to step up on the weekend and play in the, uh, in the ruck. He, he can't do it again, can he, Darcy? He's quite extraordinary when this game had to be won, what he did against Darren Jolly, wasn't he? Yeah, look, I really uh, am a fan of Zach's. He gets in and he competes. And look at the size difference there. He's 93 kilos, Zach, up against Darren Jolly, who's been one of the dominant big men in the game. But... You know, to be able to stand up and, and uh, actually not get obliterated, that's up yeah. against Big Q Lynch. And then what he's got is a bit of agility at ground level, wins a couple of clearances. It's all very well to pinch hit, though, isn't it? As he did so superbly on the weekend. But to go into a game with this as your main focus and main uh, plan of attack in that position, that's not going to work, Darcy. You, you know that. It's a real worry. And let's take a look at the uh, the big man dilemma here. Sandland's still five to six weeks with a hamstring injury. Kepler Bradley, unfortunately, knee reconstruction gone. Jonathan Griffin's done his knee at quarter time, as we said. He's out for the season. That man, I must admit, I've never seen before, Craig <laughs> Moller, but he's a rookie-listed backup rockman. They do rate him. Uh, a quad two weeks away. Yep. Zach Clark uh, did a calf slash Achilles at the start of the season. Hasn't played a game yet. We're told he's going to play in the waffle this week. Do you bring him straight back in? I would say no. You mm. can't risk that. Jack Hannath has played three games. He's a ruck uh, potential. It looks all right. All roads lead to Zach Dawson, yeah. I think, uh, Damo. But they need him as a key defender as well. So uh, that might be a real concern for Fremantle going forward. That's the issue. Uh, Friday night, 
left us. Uh, Geelong remained the only undefeated team when it defeated, to that point, the other undefeated team, Essendon. The stats, though, sometimes in footy, when, when clubs analyse them at the end of the game, they actually don't reflect what they normally would reflect under certain circumstances. Take us through the, the differentiation. If here. you had uh, suggested the start of the game, you win inside 50s by 7, clearances by 19, contested possessions and tackles, you just win the game. Uh, the reality is that 13 of the 17 Geelong goals came from uh, Essendon and turnovers, and that uh, was probably the difference, and they put you some opportunities. But all in all, I don't think the Bombers walk away from that with uh, mm. a massive dent in their confidence at all. They're still absolutely on the right path. Hey, uh, James Kelly got Brendan Goddard slightly off the ball, within play, but off the ball. Um, got him nicely. He's probably OK, I think, from a match review panel perspective there, but a bit of Twitter banter. Post uh, match day. I like this, Damo. He's probably oh, got out who fought it out after the game. Good hit last night. Sent it to James Kelly. Old fashioned shirt front. Fair game. Play on, but I've got it in the memory bank. It was, uh, it was a bit of fun. And not many people have first seen James Kelly's response. Back to Brendan Goddard. Thanks, mate. We'll keep an eye on you next time. Nervous, cracking game. Saw today. I mean, it's fantastic. You've got to give the players a bit of a forum to have a bit of fun. It was a good bump and uh, a little bit of by play, but don't worry. You'll be thinking next time. There is one stored in the memory bank and uh, look out for those two next game. Hey, every week uh, we talk about the problems with the goal umpiring review system and also the, the push in the back. I want to touch firstly on the goal umpiring review. Another issue at Hawthorne, Sydney, Saturday night. Lee Matthews, who is no one more respected, still sits on the laws committee, has come up with a, a proposal that we... It's not a new one, Damo. Basically, what he's saying is uh, forget the score review and go into the videotape. Let's go to the soccer model or the rugby uh, union model. If the ball hits the post and goes through, it's a goal. If it hits the post and comes back into, into play, it, it's play on. If it hits the point post and goes through, it's a point. If it comes off the point post and back into play, etc., it's play on. Now, it takes all the confusion out. We don't need 85 cameras that can't tell what's happening anyway. We don't need two goal umpires crossing the line and getting in the, in the way. You're, you're not endorsing this, though. Yeah, I think it's got some merit. You're it's endorsing this? absolutely worth some discussion. I mean, we've got so much... Uh, drama around uh, you know, score review, and we've had grand finals where the balls hit the post, ricocheted through that have been called. So you a actually goal want to change the scoring system? Well, we did it to, anyway. To fix this review, we changed the score system well, by having a review. We've changed the score system. Well, still six done, points for a goal, one point for behind. When they initially brought this in, they said we'll use this three or four times a year, only when there's an absolute howl. We use it three or four times a game at the moment. It's a total farce. Let's have a look at it. Let's just see if it's got some merit and uh, just open your mind a little bit. They change the rules every week. Why not one that actually makes sense? I'm not going to shoot down Lee Matthews, but I will shoot down you on that. It's a ridiculous proposal. Hey, Shane Tuck um, injured himself uh, on the weekend, uh, so pretty badly. Le left shoulder, and you can see the, the impact done initially there in the third quarter. Really, really sore. He goes off the ground to get some treatment. Returns to the ground, and then off the ball, Jared Redden sees that he's uh, obviously a little bit sore, goes for him, and Tuck reacts that way. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to make of that. Let's just keep looking at this, though. Again, he's back on the ground. You can see he's, he's distressed us. I don't know why Richmond Footy Club medicos will be putting this man back on the ground under these circumstances. I know medicos really don't like it when non-medicos like myself question them, but yeah. have a look at this, Dust. This, is, this man's not right. He should not be out there. He's not right. I'm not sure why it makes me laugh. Because look. he's running around with one arm. The medicos, if they were sitting here, would say, we don't put someone out who can do further damage. He's in a bit of pain. He might have a bit of nerve uh, issue at the time, but uh, nothing that's going to going to cause uh, more concern going forward. Well, how so, do you know? Well, I'm not a doctor. They wouldn't have sent him back out oh. there, Dave, if that hadn't have been the case. You're just a little bit too serious today, Dave, I would have thought. That's all we've got time for. Thanks again for joining us on Access Hilarious. We'll see you next Monday.